624. Um, on, the, on today's schedule, we had 624 and 378. We also, if we can get to them and we have the language, um, we'll try to get to 828, which is the campaign mm -hmm. finance law and the OPR bill. We have, if we're at that point with those, but we'll start with 624. And then if we really have time, we will continue our discussion of nutrient management plans. Is that, is O'Grady doing that case? I don't, case I, he's, thing. He's, I, he said, he could, I don't know if he has time right now to do it. I said, if you have time. Oh, okay. I, uh, no, but with that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, and uh, Chris, yeah. you know that Chris yes. over there. <laughs> you um, yeah. can just tell Senator Ash, just do that to him. Just do that. Yeah. Well, it's better than what Pank does. Verify, <laughs> verify yeah. that he owes me $50. Oh, yes. and remind me what? No, said. we're not. Oh, we're not going to discuss that public. No. Okay. But once was probably enough. Once. Yeah. Okay. Six twenty-four. You want to join us? Yeah. It's so subtle. I miss. <laughs> Where's about as subtle as having a pool right on the table? <laughs> Chris Winders almost fell out of his chair <laughs> in this pool too. <laughs> little pool too. Yes, you're right. And in a pool. <laughs> You all have um, draft 2.1 amendment of H624? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me for the record, Betsy Ann Rask, Legislative Council. This draft amendment uh, would do two things. There are two separate instances of amendment to H624, which is currently in regard to the protection of information in the statewide voter checklist. The first instance of amendment would make that technical amendment that we uh, discussed, which would amend the Public Records Act exemption for what is protected information uh, regarding statewide voter checklist info. And so you see, if you look at the bill as passed the House, the current law says that the following voter information, the month and day of birth on the bottom of page three, uh, top of page four is actually yeah, where you'll find it, but it's here right now in chair. It starts at the top, uh, bottom of page three, you're right. Um, in the Public Records Act, in section two, 1 BSA 317, sub C31, it says, this voter info is confidential. Voters month and day of birth, driver's license or non-driver ID number, telephone number you would add, email sorry, address. Where are they? Bottom of page three going on top of page four. In the oh, bill, it's not the house. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. isn't a strike all. It's a, um, so if my bottom of page five. three is crossed out. Okay. No, and you're using the initial version. You're fine. You're going to be able to find this. Right. I think it's not page three. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at the all right. unofficial version. Okay, okay. good start here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, you're fine right there. Thank you. All right. So, yes. and the last four of the social. And then the current law goes on to say, contained in an application to the statewide voter checklist or in the actual statewide voter checklist. Well, we don't have applications to the statewide voter checklist. What we technically have, where voters put all this info, is in a voter registration application. Right. So it's just correcting that um, to say that that voter information that a person provides when they register to vote in their voter registration application is what is uh, confidential and exempt for public inspection and copying under the Pact Public Records Act. So this is a technical cleanup. So it will say right. social security number contained in a voter registration application yes. or the statewide voter check. You got it. Okay. That takes care of that. The second thing that this amendment would do, have you discussed the vote tabulator issue? Okay. So the second thing this would do is uh, strike out the effective date, section three, and replace it with a new section three and a new section four for the effective date. The new section three, however, would amend the provision of law regarding uh, political subdivisions use of vote tabulators. 
So the current law provides, and we're looking back now at the draft 2.1 amendment in sec new section three that's proposed. Um, the current law provides that a BCA can vote to require the political subdivision for which it's selected to use vote tabulators in its elections. At the top of page two of draft 2.1 amendment, you'll see, however, in current law subsection B that some towns are required to use vote tabulators. A town with a thousand or more registered voters as of December 31 in an even numbered year shall use vote tabulators for the registering and counting of votes in subsequent general elections. So they're required, towns of that certain size, larger towns if you will, are required to use vote tabulators in general elections. And then subsection C provides in current law how the use of vote tabulators is paid for. Um, but the new subsection D is what would be added here at the bottom of page two to say, notwithstanding a town's use of vote tabulators under this section or any other provision of law, just in case, for example, a charter requires the use of vote tabulators, the Secretary of State may suspend the use of vote tabulators and require the hand count of votes in an election if the Secretary determines there are reasonable grounds to believe that the vote tabulators to be used in that election may have been rendered inoperable. Right. And if so, upon such a determination, the secretary shall alert the clerks of the affected municipalities of his or her decision as soon as practicable. That would be the new language there, the new effective date, again on passage, and then just an amendment to the bill title so that it would be about the protection of info in the statewide voter checklist as it currently stands and the use of vote tabulators. Is it important to say any time period within which this should happen? Like if it happens four months, oh well we wouldn't know four months before because they don't check them then. They only check them two weeks, ten days, and then the morning of. Just before. So, so this, this really is an emergency procedure. Okay. Plus, plus we might have yeah, I mean, it could be August for the August for the primary. Right. Yeah. Any comments on <clears throat> any questions for Betsy first about these two amendments? What do I have to address this one? Any comments by anybody? Please support both of them. Yeah. Josh? I'm reading it for the first time, but I appear to have an objection. Okay. Well, I have Josh in the morning and the afternoon. Lucky. Likewise. Um, I, I just want to say thanks to Betsy and the Secretary's Office for helping through this. And I hope the committee will be supportive. Okay. So, does anybody have any other comments on the bill or the amendment? Maybe if I could just say that there is some concern that the language would feed into uh, viewers that live out there that were not doing this job well. And I don't think that's not my intent at all. And we tried to craft the language to work and be, you know, not setting off those fireworks. So just for people's knowledge, we should be sensitive to that. There. Been to a public forum where people were quite animated that we were not protecting our process, and I, I think we are protecting our process, but uh, just little escape hatches. And I think it's, um, I mean, we can, for those of us who go to public meetings or who um, um, write articles or anything and also put it in there, but we had a whole um, session a while ago on. What we were, what was being done to protect our, the integrity of our voting. So I think it might be nice at some point for us to maybe even do an article about that. It would be a great op-ed piece actually for you, coming from you, to go around the state to compliment the work the Secretary of State has done in AG. 
Oh, I, I do articles, but I never send them anywhere except to my No, but papers. in your capacity as chair of Senate uh, GovOps, it actually, to instill further confidence in our voting system. I can think about that. It would have to be a little more formal than I make my articles. Hmm. Actually, articles, I think they'd appreciate the informality. My articles tend to be the way I talk. Don't you think it would be helpful? Swearing. <laughs> I try to avoid swearing. Even I don't swear in mine. I'm the one who be one. I, I want to thank Senator Pearson for the yeah. addition. I think it's a good one. And appreciate yeah. that you listen to our concerns about the, the, the crowd that gets really worked up about um, voting machines and paper ballots and things like that. And just point out we are having, it, 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 with legitimate concern sometimes, and but they don't quite um, <clears throat> buy into the fact that we're we're addressing those concerns. Um, there is a cyber security forum tomorrow right. night, four to six, at the Pavilion Auditorium. For, for anyone who's interested, I think Orca is going to be there to record it. Uh, so we'll have that to send out to people so they can really be informed about what it is we're doing to protect the Good. security for elections. Good. And the And I did see <laughs> this committee meeting on this issue on my local Community television last weekend. <laughs> I said, ooh, comb your hair. <laughs> um, so I, just a question on uh, format here. Would it be easier to make this a strike all than to have these two amendments that the yes. amendment almost looks longer than the I'd be happy to convert it to a I, I would. I think they're almost always, always if there's more than one amendment, I think it's usually easier to problem. present. Thank you. I can um, I can do that one. You have your next hearing with Becky, and I can bring it back down. Um, okay. I should be able to convert it in that time. Okay. Yeah, I can bring it back down. She's just that good. She uh, is <laughs> that good. <laughs> So then, and then we'll, we can vote on it then. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you. And yes, thank you, Senator Pearson, for bringing that forward. Good work. Yes, good work. She seems to have a pretty crazy schedule. Okay, and she said that she only has one time to use. She. No, no. We can go through the eight counts. Yeah, those are double two options. Thank you. I think these tabulating machines are great. Yeah, they're great. There's no schedule. As long as our vendor is great. As long as our vendor is great. They are great. They are great. Both of them are great. And it gives the constables another it. activity. <laughs> the constables are ever ready by the side of the tabulator. They are. And the justices. Not ours. Justices of the peace. And justices of the peace. What's our, in the work? Our constable, we don't even have constables anymore. Yeah, we, we do. Think. We have two. First and second. Oh. The only one I've ever known in Burlington was Jess Oski. She was a constable. She oh, really? <laughs> Jess was? I'd like to see her with a vicious dog. I don't think I constables are a vicious dog. Yeah, they do dogs all the time. They, they, they don't see what they do. No, no, that, they collect them. that they if you if your if your constable is your animal control officer, then they do. Most constables aren't. They get called out on a lot of animals. <clears throat> you add she didn't have anything to do, she told me. Yeah. <laughs> Our she constables stood around a town meeting. Then we there used to be a requirement that a constable be present at the ballot box for tabulating. Well, we're let's talk. Functions by the very old yes, school rules. Okay. What else are we doing? Can we move to artificial <laughs> intelligence? Oh, speaking of animals. Do you want to, or not me, do you want to go through their Do you want to go through yours first? Good. Perfect. Unless you want to. No, no, I'm okay. fine. Whatever. Yeah, as long as you're here and you don't have to be someplace else right away. Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's do it. So we'll go then to 828. Great. 828, great. Okay. So do you have in front of you draft number 3.2? We yep. do. Awesome. Awesome. We do. Okay. 
Thank you, Gail. Oh my gosh, they're already in my our folders. Mm -hmm. Gail, thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Okay. okay. Yeah. So thanks for the uh, feedback, Senator Pearson, on what happened in here discussing H 828, which is in regard to disclosures and campaign finance law. I believe I've incorporated what you decided from your conversation yesterday namely to get rid of the campaign finance violation curing language and just to make a couple tweaks to the call it Facebook language. However, I wanted to uh, address one other issue that I added in here for your consideration, and that's on page two and potentially amending the definition of mass media activity. Now to tee this up, your conversation has been about the identification requirements in electioneering communications. Uh, electioneering communication, um, when that term is used, there's a requirement that you identify in the electioneering communication uh, basically who paid for it. When there's a mass media activity, that triggers another disclosure requirement in your campaign finance law. It's another form of disclosure, but it addresses a different issue. When there's a mass media activity totaling $500 or more that's made within 45 days before an election, there has to be a special mass media report that's filed with the Secretary of State and with a copy of that report going to each candidate whose name or likeness is included in the activity without the candidate's knowledge. So there's two different forms of disclosure um, and they have similar but not the same definitions. The one thing that I noticed is if you look at page one and look at our current law definition of electioneering communication, it talks about communications that are referring to candidates and either attacking or opposing them, and it goes on to say including these types of communications. It'll say including communications published in a newspaper or periodical or broadcast on radio or television or over the internet is one of them, just keep that in mind, over the internet. And then if you turn to the um, top of page two, it also includes uh, now mass electronic or digital communications. The, the House has proposed to substitute mass electronic or digital communications for mass emails. And you had um, not wanted to change that. The issue that is a potential issue that it seems in the mass media activity definition is that it, it as it's defined, it means currently under current law a TV commercial. Sorry, sorry. on page two here. Page two. Draft. I don't. I have a draft that starts on page three. It appears. Oh, the printer was acting up. So I was trying to follow you, and I couldn't uh, find where they. So sorry. Is it just? I, I, I use your experience. So if you're looking on page two of draft 3.2, mass media activity under current law means a TV commercial, radio commercial, and then it goes on to say mass mailing, mass electronic or digital communication, um, and then literature drops, newspaper, periodical ads, robocalls, phone banks. The thing about the mass media activity is that while it uses mass electronic or digital communication, and that matches what you would do to the definition of electioneering communication, the issue that it seems is that electioneering communication also addresses um, communications over the internet. So it just raised in my mind the question of whether there's a difference between communications over the internet and mass electronic or digital communications. Why include in electioneering communication a reference to the internet and electronic or digital communications? That seems to imply that those are considered two different things. Um, so to try to make the two definitions consistent and make sure that you're capturing internet ads, um, I'm wondering if it seems like you should add reference to internet ads in the definition of mass media activity. Sounds reasonable to me. Okay, the director of elections. I would agree. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, so that's just that. Um, I know for it, we'll send the director of elections for the record, just to add to that, I think what was discussed in the House too, and it speaks to your point, was that 
uh, expanding it from email to electronic communication, they were really just thinking about text okay. and mass texting that can happen. Mm -hmm. And so no, that speaks to that. Those aren't necessarily over the internet. But, um, so it might be good to add that to the mass media definition as well. Okay. That's the way I would go. Thanks for that. Um, otherwise, it's the same language for adding in that extra local candidate report for those people who spend, candidates who spend at least uh, 500 bucks or more, or roll over. Um, on page three, addressing your 2972, no changes on that page three. But the only page changes on page four, regarding the Facebook portion, if you will. Um, the former draft said, if it's not possible to meet the ID requirements of this section, I understand you want to say, if it's not practicable. So that word was changed. And then on line 13, it used to say um, that if you click the link, it takes the reader directly to a web page or social media page that provides all the ID information as required. And I understood that you decided to take out the word directly, just that it would take you to that page um, and where the info has to be provided. Otherwise, um, those are the only changes from the previous draft you reviewed. If I wasn't here to hear your discussion, um, but I think do you understand the changes about non-natural person to individual in, on page five? It's just that in 2973 on page five, I think that's the only section of the campaign finance law that referred to non-natural persons when we otherwise use individuals and just to be consistent to use that individual phrase. Um, and I, I know some pretty unnatural persons. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly. And then the effective date section would be on passage. So these new ID requirements and uh, the new definition of mass media activity would take effect on passage. But there's that carve out for the local candidates report taking effect on the um, beginning of the next election next. cycle, which is a little off because for most of our local elections, they're not on our standard two year general election cycle, although justice of the peace elections are because by the constitution, they happen at the general election. So I don't know if that makes sense from an administrative perspective to have the local candidates uh, report, new report requirement take effect beginning of the two year general election cycle. That's where it is now though. Seems like it would work to think of um, any local elections that would be scheduled early January, for example. The Senate at Clarkson's point that I think come up any time, mm -hmm. local special yes. um, the vast majority are next day maybe. Mm -hmm. I could go either way, it could be effective <laughs> now or in the summer. Mm -hmm. Seems like this way we don't risk interrupting someone mid whatever, although it's not exactly a big, a big change. I, I, don't, I don't care either way. Josh? M Madam Chair, just from the Attorney General's perspective, just to give a little lead time so that there's an opportunity to do outreach and education, especially for the local races, yes. would be beneficial. Good. Is this enough? I agree. Um, I think so, but not having to really thought through, you know, sort of at some lead time as opposed to maybe that support. Yeah. Well, I'll stop there. And it's good, for instance, to our website. Yeah. If that's the point. Sorry, well, that's right. People know anyway. Failing to hear you. I'm, I'm concurring that it would give us time to update our guide, our campaign finance guide, and our website. Okay. And you're going to have to update it anyway for these elections if this is on passage. So there's a bunch of some updating already. Sure. I mean, so if you're going to update it, you might as well. Are we on this? Yes. I mean, it, it strikes me as a modest update to include the municipal crowd if we wanted, if, given that you have to update everything else also. And I, I concur. Uh, I'm sorry. No, so it, just, it just it seems to make sense to do it all on passage, is I guess my point. Uh, I, I think your point was not to up the time to update the website, but time to inform local candidates that their requirements have changed. And if, if I may, without disparaging the local candidates, they typically are the most unsophisticated <laughs> on the campaign finance laws. Right. They're the ones that aren't thinking about it. Um, yeah. But I mean, we'll certainly 
to work with folks regardless of yeah. what you decide. I'm happy enough to leave it with that. Um, and, and I, because local also, um, I believe, um, affects county, which is state's attorney and um, um, just uh, sheriffs. And so they they now would be required to. to they're all on your same. Oh, they're currently on, and they're currently required to file this four days. No, they're on I'm, your reporting. They're on our reporting cycle. Okay. Yeah. This is this really is just. I don't know. Just five. Okay. Okay. I'm fine. Cool. Okay. okay. So, uh, Will, when you update it for all this electronic equipment, uh, uh, communication, and the ad, the clicks, and everything else, I'm just I'm just curious because I sort of. Is that that will be all available on your website fairly soon once it's all passed? Yes. Right. I think yeah, we're actually going and looked. Yeah, and this there isn't really a change. It's helping just make it more clear. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I would. I. Well, I think. Right, but the media buys. You know, I just. They're already there. Right, no, I'm just curious. Well, the I've been dependent on other people to find the kids. Okay. Are we, does anybody have any more comments on H828? Are we ready to consider it? I know that we passed H, uh, draft. Oh, I uh, move that we adopt draft uh, 3.2 of H828. Okay. Clarkson? Yes. Pearson? Yes. Mayor? Yes. Almar? No. White? Yes. Right. Stick it out there, those local guys. There you go. Yeah. They better stick up for you then. <laughs> I'm sure the cards, the thank you cards will come flooding in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. you want me to take that one? Sure, if you'd like to. It's not controversial, so it's I don't so no wallpaper. I'll skip away with it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, can we go to the OPR bill? Oh. I will have to uh, go find that page because there's a pickup shop. It's supposed to pick up copies. Oh, oh. We need the ones. Oh, the thumbs up guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's how I feel. I don't know why. I don't know why. You work so darn hard, man. <laughs> like a dog. Like a dog. Like a dog. <laughs> Sandals from shoes. Yes. 
Tschüss.